Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. Well, technically this is EVE Online, I guess, isn't it? It's kind of a video here for both. This is EVE Online that you're looking at here on screen. I've promised that I would be putting out EVE Online videos as well soon, and, well, here we are. We've got the laptop, everything's up and running now, we can start on this kind of content. So the first video I wanted to do was an EVE Echoes player's guide to EVE Online. This isn't meant as a ground-up introduction to EVE Online and New Eden as a whole. If you are watching this because you've just downloaded EVE Online and you're going into New Eden for the very first time, a lot of the concepts and phrases and terms I use here are not going to be familiar and I'm not going to be spending much time to you know, stopping and actually explaining any of those. This video is primarily designed for anyone who has played EVE Echoes for an extended period of time and is looking to get started in EVE Online for whatever reason. And before we go any further, I want to make something abundantly clear. I do not believe that EVE Online is the better game between EVE Echoes and EVE Online. I also don't believe that EVE Echoes is the better game. I think both of them are flawed, but both of them have major advantages and disadvantages to each other as well. Neither of them is a perfect game. They are both exceptional gaming experiences, in their own unique way. I'm not trying to drag people out of EVE Echoes into EVE Online, but I'm trying to teach those who want to try EVE Online how to get a good foothold in it. Basically, I think that a lot of people can learn some stuff, I think, by actually playing both, but I get that not everyone has the time for that, and so most people are going to stick with the one that they already know. If you are watching this, though, from Eve Echoes and considering jumping in, well, I hope it helps, and if it does, hit a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of stuff, you know the drill by now, and head across to my Patreon to check out more information there. Now this video is going to be pretty freeform, I'm going to try and break this up in a way that I can then put timestamps in the description below, but otherwise we're going to be looking at this as basically you've played EVE Echoes for a while, you've just downloaded EVE Online, you've gone through the frankly ridiculous character creation process, yes, you spent all that time, a couple of hours in the character creator to make a little postage stamp picture of yourself in the top left here that ultimately that's how big it's going to appear to most people on screen. Congrats, it's crazy isn't it? Anyway, once you have landed into EVE Echo, uh, EVE Online, if it gives you the option for the tutorial, I strongly recommend you go for it, even if you've played EVE Online before, just to get used to using things like your approach and your orbit and learning the keyboard shortcuts for these, because it does make things a lot easier and faster in regards to navigation. But, we're going to assume that you've completed the tutorial, you've docked up in your first station where you've been given your corvette. In this case, obviously, I went Minmatar, so my corvette is the Reaper, but it could be the Ibis, or whichever faction you've started off as, whichever the Empire's. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do once you have started off with whichever faction you're looking for, once you're docked up in your Reaper, is to open up this little button here, or press Alt-M, the Agency. This is where you start choosing your missions, encounters, all this kind of thing. It's an easy way to get PvE content, there's other stuff in here as well, but for the time being, we want to look at Agents and Missions, which we can either get over the top, or by this box here. If we go Agents and Missions, and then on the right hand side, we have Career Agents. Now the Career Agents come in numerous different flavours. We have Enforcer, Industrialist Producer, Explorer, Soldier of Fortune, and Industrialist Entrepreneur. These are going to teach you everything you need to know about how to use that particular role. And again, if you think that, oh, I know all of this, I know how combat works in EVE Online, I know how all that, like mining and all that works, if you go through the Enforcer stuff there, you're going to end up giving yourself a Slasher and a Rifter. Um, going through the Soldier of Fortune, you'll actually eventually earn yourself a Thrasher. The Explorer will give you a Burst and a Probe. Um, the Industrialist Producer will get, uh, get you a Venture. You get a lot of free ships, free modules and things like this just for doing these, along with a load of ISK and just a refresher course into it. I strongly recommend you do it. Now, I will do a video on the Explorer one because it is terribly explained. Um, that's something we'll look into directly separately. It just does not explain how you actually do half of those missions, but good luck if you try it. You might be a bit smarter than me and be able to figure it out first time. But basically you'd go into one of these and then set destination because you see these are at a different station. If you've started with Minmatar, you're probably already at Maluka. Um, I'm here in Stirt at the moment. 
um, because I came out here to do a couple of other encounters, but basically I've actually done this purposely to show you something. This isn't like Eve Echoes where you can pick up encounters from anywhere. Even once you've done all of these and you want to have a look at some of the other agent submissions, you just want to go for mission agent security, which is like your ratting missions, some of these you'll see are in current station or in current system or several jumps away. You have to actually be docked at the particular station in order to speak to that person. So if I want to speak to Alga Mas uh, Masaratan here, I'm going to need to fly all the way out to Amamaki, which is 0.4 system, eight jumps away, and once I have docked at the particular station that he's at, I'll be able to start up a conversation with him and try and do some of the encounters that he's got for me. But if we go back to the career agents and go for industrialist producer, if we tap on set destination, if you're not already at a place that you want to go, then setting a destination is the best way for it, because autopilot works very differently in here as I'll show you in a moment. Now here you can see that we are currently at, um, well, we are currently here at Sturt. Our first jump is going to take us to Arlulf, and our final destination is Maluka, and it kind of gives you that as a breakdown here. If you've been flying around and you're like, ooh, crikey, where did I leave all those other ships? You can open up your personal assets by clicking this icon here, or Alt-Tab, and it'll give you all the different places that you can go to here. So for example, I've got a load of stuff currently docked at Heck. That's where my fire tail is currently sitting. So I can sit there and I can right click on this, set destination, and you'll see that that now changes there and shows me the complete route there. It tells me my next station, sorry, my next system to jump into is going to be Ilwin, and I'm going to end up at Heck. And that's the full route there along the top that we're going to be following. Now I'm going to showcase this again in regards to going back in to the uh, into the agency. So it's this icon here, and we're going to go industrialist producer set destination, and we're going to start to move towards it. And obviously you would do this in like your uh, your Reaper or whatever Corvette you've got. I'm currently flying a Wolf because I love these things, the Rifter Assault equivalent. And um, basically, once you have a situation here like you've got a destination set, you'll hit undock up here, and it will of course do the usual undocking, you've got a few seconds to abort that if you want to. If you're doing a particular encounter, you'll find that it actually has a block down here that you can set as well that'll take you straight to undocking. Now, once we're in space, the reason that we've set destination is because you see here in our overview, that is now marked in yellow, the Stargate that we want to go to. I can right click this and hit jump on it. We've also got things like warp to within um, and all these different options. What we're looking for here is just to click jump. That said, I wanted to show you Autopilot. Autopilot is down here, which is either by clicking this A symbol at the bottom of the screen, or it is Control S. I'm just going to click because the mouse is already here. Now watch what happens when we Autopilot. This is very different to Eve Echoes, and if you're not aware of this, it is going to get you killed, especially if you're going into anywhere low sec or lower, where gate guns aren't really such a thing as they are in Eve Echoes. Now here we are, we're warping towards the gate here, the gate to Arlulf. And when we arrive, keep an eye on the overview here. We're gonna drop out of our warp tunnel now. Here we are. And you'll notice we're 10 kilometers away from the gate still. That is not enough to actually jump. So we now autopilot and slow boat all the way in to actually be able to jump. Now, if you're in low sec or even null sec doing this, then that is going to get you killed because you simply just cannot get there in time. So I'm going to use a afterburner just to speed that up a bit. It will jump me through. Um, and then once we're jumping, I'll switch off the autopilot. And we're going to manually jump. And we get the really cool jump graphics now. I love EVE Online's jump graphics. Check that out. How cool is that? Anyway. We're now in our next system. You see, because we've got destination set, the place we're aiming for is still highlighted in yellow, so I can just immediately hit jump on that. Again, you can autopilot this, but be aware you're gonna be slow boating that last 10 kilometers, uh, meaning you either have to then tap your afterburner or whatever. If you think you're going to be completely safe, you're going through high sec, you can do this while you go and put the kettle on or whatever, but it does add a significant amount of time to your, uh, to your journey. Here you can see I've hit jump, so we're gonna warp straight to the Amiana, uh, and however you pronounce that, Aminka, Aminaka, Aminaka Gate. There we are, we come in at zero, no slow boating, bam, we're gonna warp straight away through that tunnel. Off we go with a really cool transition there as well. I 
really love this stuff in Even Planet. Uh, one thing I miss about Ebeko is these, uh, the, these sort of bits here. Finally, we're going to jump through into Maluka, where we will dock, and I know this bit's getting a bit sort of long in the tooth, I wish it could have been like in a one or two systems in hindsight, but I just wanted to show you how we actually do all of this walking and jumping manually, um, so that you kind of get used to just doing this quite quickly. Um, and not relying on autopilot. Autopilot is not something that we rely on here in EVE Online. It is going to get you killed. Get out of that habit now. Final gate here. We can actually have a quick look at the gate. Here we are. We can even zoom in on that. Love the graphics. And this laptop has actually really quite impressed me as well, that it runs everything that I've shoved onto here at full specs. And um, I'm playing Apex Legends at the moment, for example, on full specs. Anyway, finally then, we're going to hit dock. And you'll see we do the usual thing here, and we can actually, again, track the station that we're aiming towards by clicking up here or hitting C, and it's going to centre the camera on where we're aiming. There we are. Republic University. There it is. And then we're going to dock in our wolf, where we can then pick those encounters and start doing what they're supposed to do. So we're going to now be towed into the station. Um, I love these little things as well, and the sort of you know the docking request, uh, docking request, um, docking permission accepted, all that kind of thing. It's just a really cool bit of flavour and all that going on. So now that we're in the station, you'll see that here on the right hand side we have our agents tab, and they're showing you all the different agents here, and it gives you an idea of who they work for, because there are different sort of groups that you can do encounters for and gain standing with. Now we wanted to have a look at the particular in, uh, the list here, industrialist producer. Again, that's going in by the agency. We then hit start conversation and because we're in the same station, we should get the window open and it's going to give us all of the information here. So it's going to tell you what you need to do. Your objective is then here. I do recommend reading through this. It's some remarkably well-written stuff from CCP. And then here, go to the asteroid field your agent sent you to and mine 1,000 units of Veldspar in that location. In this case, granted items. When you accept this mission, you will be granted one of these. So obviously you need to fit it. That's going to be something that is given to you for the mission. And you'll get to keep it unless it states otherwise. We then have our rewards at the end of the encounter and bonus rewards if we manage to complete that within a certain time limit. In this case, six hours. Now, considering all you're going to do here is basically, once you accept this mission, fit that mining laser to whatever ship you fancy. I would do it in the Wolf here, for example. And then need to warp out to the station, uh, to the mining belt, um, mine a little bit of something like it says here, and then we come back and then we get collateral here as well, um, if you, which you pay to take the mission and you get it back if you complete the mission. So we're actually going to do this one. I'm going to hit accept, or rather I'm going to show you how this starts. Because remember I said you get this blue box here if you're doing an encounter. Remember, first of all, though, we've got that item that we're going to be needing to fit our mining laser. I've got a civilian miner and a couple of other bits and pieces in and around here as well on this particular hangar. Um, and there's a couple of other things to talk about. Now here, if we come down the left hand side, we have the fitting window, it's Alt and F to open it manually, and you can have everything you need here. Now I want to spend a bit of time talking about fitting in EVE Online because there are some considerable differences between this and Echoes. Now first of all, what we actually have here on the left hand side is done by sort of clicking this. If you want a nice small version of the fitting window, you can have just that. Opening up the right hand side gives you your full breakdown of everything here as you would see it, and we'll talk about the HUD and that in a moment. This is similar to Eve Echo, so you should basically have an understanding of what's going on there. But we can actually open up our inventory, and we can change this to different parts. I've got it to the item hanger, because that's where everything should be. So, here we are, there's the miner there, the symbol obviously for its high slot. We've got our high slots here. Now you'll notice that the wolf has four high slots, but it's got five, right? It's five, one, two, three, four, five. That's because these are turret hard points. We also have things like launcher hard points, where I can put, in this case, I've got a rocket launcher fitted, or a something like a core probe launcher if you want to go scanning. It's also where things like Nosferatus and neutralizers go in EVE Online. You'll also notice that our mid slots here contain an afterburner and a shield extender. Again, shield tanking and propulsion mods go into the mid slots. Low slots are where your armor tanking modules go, and in this case I've got three gyro stabilizer 2s fitted as well. Um, gyro stabilizers are not activated 
in EVE Online. They are passive modules. And then we've got our rigs on the side here. I've got two small projectile collision accelerators and a burst aerator, sorry, one collision accelerator and one burst aerator fitted there. And we get little alerts here saying, hang on, you've got shield modules fit to an armor ship. And it's like, yes, I know it's an armor ship. This works much better for me. And we've got things like a warning just next to that, if I click off, um, fitting advisory. I've got three things there, plus the two rigs, all kind of giving diminishing returns to each other. Again, that's fine. It's by design. It's alerting that my fit is not ideal in what the game is saying, but actually this fit is a highly recommended fit. It's good fun. It does a lot of damage. So what I'm going to do is actually take off one of my turrets here. Now you see I've got remove charge, which is ammunition, which we'll talk about in just a moment, and then unfit module. So we're going to clear the module group, which is just where I've stacked modules, and then we're going to take the miner, drag it into that high slot. Oh, I don't have enough CPU, which means I'm going to have to offline some of these. This is something that I quite like in EVE, uh, Eve Online as well. You can manually offline your different modules so that they're not using your CPU, and then we can go back to that laser, hopefully put that online. Nope, we're just going to have <laughs> one heck of a time trying to do everything here. So I'm going to put everything offline. There we are, that's a nice big one. And we go back to put online, and we've got that there. So that's now fitted, and I can do what I need to do, which is to undock and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to do the full mission, but just to showcase how this would work. Here, because we've got the agent missions, this is a collapsible menu on the side. I can hit undock, open that up, and it will take us out into space. Obviously, we can still hit undock here as well. This is context sensitive, the agent window here. Um, you'll see that now that we're out in space, we have straight up warp to location. If you've accidentally like sorted all of this and closed it, you can also go into your activities here at the top and then into the journal and it'll tell you which sort of agent missions you have available. We can right click this and read details and read through all of that stuff again and um, where it all needs to go, yada yada yada, and we can get a full idea of what's going on. We're going to close all of that down, open up the agent missions drop down here again and just hit warp to location. And that will automatically take us exactly where we need to be for this particular mission. This only doesn't work in sort of the scanning ones. Those you do actually have to manually find the sites. As I said, we'll talk about that in a future video because it's its own unique thing. It's worth noting as well, we do have ammunition here as well. You can see where that's a bit, but we'll talk about that in a second. Here, you would come into this belt and then do the stuff that it wants you to. So mining, we've got our particular Veldspar. You guys should know how, uh, how all this works by now. Hold control and click our target. There's the Veldspar. We can now start mining and just, yeah, you know how this works. And at the end of all of this, it will then say sort of mission complete, go dock up and do your thing. So let's cycle it once. I'm not going to show anything more than this because it's mining. This is a good opportunity though to talk about the different HUD down here at the bottom, the heads up display. Now the obviously these three bars are your shield, your armor and your hull, just as they are in EVE Online. This weird star thing in the middle is your capacitor, which is a very different display of how your capacitor looks and works. Um, those bars are going to decrease in a clockwise manner. And to show you how all that works, there's more to capacitor than that, but basically that's the capacitor display in the center. And then we've, of course, got our flight velocity here at the bottom. We can manually this with full speed or by dragging in here at different speeds. We can then also, like there, I've just hit 406. I can also tap on the little uh, the minus symbol and then hit stop ship, and that'll park our ship wherever we are based. At this point as well, we are currently... Oh, there we go. Thank you. We've got all the stuff we need. Um, we are currently on the tactical camera. You can change this to things like your orbit camera, and it'll look around you. There are other things like the first-person camera. If you really fancy trying to play the game like that, good luck. Um, you've got your hold is here that you can open up. We then have the tactical overlay, which gives you all of that information like we've recently had added in EVE Echoes, but a lot more of it available here in EVE Online, which is pretty cool. I actually tend to have it off most of the time and just control D it when I need it. Um, then we have scanners. Again, this will be covered in future videos, but this is basically how you scan and find new items. It's a really cool system. Um, we're not going to stress about it right here, right now. Um, we're just going to wait until hopefully this Veldspar is going to be enough to trigger the end of this mission because I don't want to be sitting here in a wolf for the entirety of this video mining Veldspar because that makes things very boring and there's other stuff I want to talk about that does require me to be docked.
So yeah, basically, I'm going to skip through from this. Eventually, once you've got enough, you'll get a little alert here saying that you can dock, or of course, we can just do the typical manual dock by going in on our overview, right click and dock. I'm going to come back and finish this later because my goodness, no one cares about mining footage. It's the most boring thing to watch ever. I mean, it can be chill to do, but watching it is not at all exciting. Anyway, here we are back at the Republic University. Let's dock up and talk about a few other minor shifts and changes, just so that you've got an idea of where we should be looking for certain things. First of all, we'll have a look at ammo, then I'm going to talk about skills and the ship tree and how those two things work together, because again, they are very different to how they operate in EVE Echoes, and we've touched on this briefly in the video I did about uh, tech points and why I hate tech levels, and they're absolutely awful. See here, it's now telling me, nope, you haven't finished, go on dock and do it. No, shush. Anyway, first of all then, let's have a look at ammunition. So I'm going to go into my fitting window. We are going to get rid of this awful mining laser. I don't want to have a mining laser there. I'm going to put everything else back online. Like so. Just manually, one at a time, add all of those back in. Now, which guns am I actually even using here? 200 millimeters, yeah, thought as much. So I'm going to drag those back into position. Now, it's not just a case of fitting your high slots like this. If I go out into combat, I'm not going to be super effective with a load of empty cannons. So, what we then have are different types of ammunition. Now here, you can see if I mouse over this, we've got a 200mm auto cannon 2, and it's currently containing 120 barrage S. Now what on earth does that mean? Well, these are the different types of ammunition here. Now to load ammunition, all you need to do is drag it over and drop it on. And there we are, that's now loaded. In the field, you can right click on your turrets and you can manually reload as well. Or again, when you run out of ammunition, once it's fired off all of its charges, it will manually reload using any items, uh, any uh, ammunition left inside your cargo hold. So my cargo hold here has some Inferno rockets and Barrage S ammo. Now, because obviously I'm using cannons, cannons are projectile turrets, we need to use projectile ammo. There are, of course, differences here for things like lasers and railguns. Lasers use focusing crystals, and railguns use their own types of ammo. And if you go onto a regional market, if we clear everything here, so we're back to start, we have ammunition and charges, and you can see all the different types of ammo here. Using projectile ammo as the example, we then have different types, so advanced artillery, advanced autocannon, faction, and standard. We care about standard for the moment. Your ship size, or rather your weapon size, extra large, which is capital, large for battleships, medium for battle cruisers and cruisers, small for frigates and destroyers, obviously I'm in a frigate, and here we have our different types of ammo. Now some of these are pretty straightforward. If I have a look at titan Titanium Sabo and open this up, we've got a description here that tells us all about it and tells us we get a 20% increased tracking speed by having this ammunition loaded. And if we go into the attributes and scroll down, you can also see its damage here. Two explosive damage, six kinetic, nothing into thermal or electromagnetic. If, for example, then we were to have a look at EMP, on this hand, this gives us a 50% reduced optimal range. That means we're going to have to be a little bit closer to be effective with it. But, if we look down here, we now have 2 explosive damage, 1 kinetic, and a whopping 9 electromagnetic, which makes this fantastic for cutting through shields. Now, you might be tempted to go, oh, right, okay, well, I like autocannons, let's go for some advanced stuff. For example, hail or barrage. And if we look at hail, and its description, 25% reduced fall off, 50% reduced optimal, 25% reduced tracking speed, but some rather hefty damage here, 13.9 explosive, 3 on the kinetic, and the same if we have a quick look at barrage, we have here a description, 25% reduced tracking speed, but 50% increased fall off, which means suddenly we're getting more application at slightly further ranges, damage again, 6 HP explosive, 5 on kinetic, and you can sit there and think, okay, well, okay, can I use this? Well, if we look at this in the market, if we tap onto it, there is this box here, this little blue box, saying you have all the required skills to use this item. If, for example, though, I was to have a look at the Barrage XL, you do not possess all of the required skills to use this item, and you can tap on it, and it'll tell you what skills you need, and this looks horrifically confusing at this point in time, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. But that's essentially how ammunition works. You just need to, like, you know, double-check everything. It's the same when you're looking, for example, the gyro stabilizers. You might have a look at these and go, okay, I can fit a gyro stabilizer, but I can't fit a gyro stabilizer too. Why is that? 
Well, if we go into requirements, it's because we need re weapon upgrades at four and gunnery at two. And you can just kind of click onto these and they'll train all the bits you need for you. But I think it's worthwhile talking about this manually in just a moment. Before we do though, because it's linking into a similar sort of thing, let's have a look at the ship tree. Now the ship tree in EVE Online is very different to the one in EVE Echoes. You'll notice there's no sodding tech levels down the side, um, and things are still like between small up to the largest of the large at the right, so we've still got frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships, and then our capitals and super capitals. Now, if we have a look and sort of zoom in here, at the start, obviously, we have a corvette. That's the ship you're going to be flying, and very swiftly, you're going to be able to open up your six starter frigates. These, as you look at them, you'll see, be able to have a look and, just like the ship tree in Ibeko, see exactly what it is that they do. We then have the Navy issue frigates, and if we mouse over these, you'll see that basically you need a couple of extra skills in order to unlock them. That's what it's showing here at the bottom. Again, if I come up, if I want to fly assault frigates or interceptors, there are special skills that are required for me to use them here. So looking at interceptors for an example, in order to be able to fly them, you need to have Minmatar frigate and interceptor skills. I'm only term interceptor one, admittedly, and if we kind of click onto one of these that I don't have, so for example, I'm working towards flying a cheetah, here I need to see what do I need to fly it. Well, I needed Minmatar frigate five. I've got Minmatar frigate five, so that's awesome. That's nice and easy. But then I also need covert ops. Now, the covert ops skill isn't just a skill that you can train on its own. And if we click onto that, you'll see that in itself. The Covert Ops skill requires us to have Spaceship Command 3, which I have, Power Grid Management 2, which I have, CPU Management 2, which I have, and these two skills require you to have certain levels and electronics upgrades, which is why they're indented. And then I need to have electronics upgrades 5. So I've managed to train all of these because I was using the probe a bit for exploration earlier, but I haven't got electronic upgrades 5 yet. You can see here, there is a flashing blue square. The reason it's flashing is because that is the skill currently being trained. If I wanted to come out and instead have a look at, for example, the electronic attack ships here, and have a look at the skills, I need electronic attack ships as a skill. That requires me to have Spaceship Command 3, which I have, CPU Management 2, which I have, Long Range Targeting 5. I've only got Long Range Targeting 4, hence the final square is greyed out. This means if you're looking at a ship to fly, that's how you figure out what you need. It's also worth paying attention to the Omega locks here. Basically, if I want to fly frigates, I can fly any of these frigates absolutely fine as an alpha player. I cannot fly any of these because they are locked behind an Omega gate. Same here with destroyers, I can fly a Talwa or a Thrasher, no troubles, no questions asked, but I need Omega if I want to fly the Interdictor, Command Destroyer, or the Tactical Destroyer here at the top. Finally, if we just showcase this a little bit further on, you'll notice that even for like a battleship, I can actually fly a Typhoon, a Maelstrom, a Tempest, the Typhoon Fleet Issue, and the Tempest Fleet Issue without needing Omega. But what skills do these require? Well, let's have a look. If we tap onto here, you can see we have Minmatar Battleship is required at level one. Mimitar Battleship Level 1 requires Mimitar Battlecruiser 3, Mimitar Battlecruiser 3 requires Mimitar Cruiser 3, Destroyer 3, Frigate 3, Spaceship Command 1. Now because we actually need Spaceship Command 4 as well as part of this, we've just got to train those up. So it's nice and simple, if you really want to fly battleships straight out the gate, start training into whatever skills are required towards that battleship. Don't go any further. I've got Minmatar Frigate 5. If I only cared about battleships, I could just go to 3, stop, train up to Destroyer 3, stop, Cruiser 3, stop, and Battle Cruiser 3, and so on. So that's kind of how you get your skills. And if you're looking at things like that, that's the easiest way to just kind of go, right, what skills do I need to fly the cheetah? Okay, let's click on that. Um, requires is the other way here. I need that covert ops skill. Let's just hit train and it will add it to the queue. And it's a nice, simple way of doing it there. But if we want to do this kind of stuff manually, well, we can click on this bit here, skills. Now here we have our training queue on the right hand side, you can see because I'm an Omega player, I've got 101 days, 15 hours and 36 minutes all queued up, basically enough there for me to get that covert ops and start flying it at a basic level, then some more for flying the Hurricane, the Hurricane Fleet Issue and the Sleipnir, that's ultimately what I'm working on here, um, once I've got command ships there, 
that'll be my slate name all done. And I've got some assault frigates and that sprinkled in there as well, just to make sure I'm doing better with those as we go too. But I will unlock other things. Now again, some of these you'll see that here, for example, if we're looking at medium projectile turret 5, that unlocks medium artillery specialization and medium autocannon specialization. That's what this little book here means. It means it unlocks new skills. The one here means equipment unlocked. In this case, by training medium artillery specialization 1, I will be able to use a 650mm artillery cannon 2 and a 720mm howitzer artillery 2. Same here that once the electronics upgrades is trained, I'll be able to use the signal amplifier 2. Once covert ops is trained, oh there we are, the cheetah and the hound become unlocked. So you can see what these skills do. Now ultimately, this is the manual side of things, and this can be as confusing as all heck. Because if we just look in gunnery, for crying out loud, we've got things like small projectile turret, which you can mouse over and it tells you this. Operation of small projectile turrets, 5% bonus to turret damage per level. And of course, like with Eve Echoes, check what skills your particular ship wants. If we jump back to the skill tree, sorry, the ship tree for a moment, and we have a look, for example, at the wolf. And that gets bonuses from Assault Frigates um, per level there, and Minmatar Frigate. So I obviously want Minmatar Frigate to 5 and Assault Frigates to 5. Once I have the Cheetah trained, um, I obviously want to get Covert Ops up to 5 because it's getting a 20% reduction in cloaking devices per level, 10% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength per level, and a 10% re reduction in time required for the survey probe scans per level. 50% at full training, so I want to have those. Same with Minmatar Frigate, and if you're looking at any of these other ones, let's look at something a bit simpler, like Interdictor, Minmatar Destroyers. Here it's just Minmatar Destroyer, Minmatar Destroyer, but things like, for example, the Republic Fleet Firetail, and let's actually have a look at something a bit more exciting. Let's look at the Dromiel. So the Dromiel, for example, Minmatar Frigate bonuses per skill level, Galente Frigate bonuses per skill level, and Roll Bonus. So you, those are what you need to be training into for that, so you can have a look. You can see what those skills do directly, but obviously train the skills that your particular ship is looking for. Then you get all these additional ones, whereas in EVE, on, uh, Eve Echoes, for example, we have, say, the Micro Warp Drive skill and the, uh, the Afterburner skill, and those will improve the cycle time of those modules, they will reduce the amount of capacitor that those modules use, and they will increase their boost, you know, the actual boost you get from them. Here we have things like the Afterburner skill, just reduces the afterburner duration and capacitor use. That's There's no boost to it. You, your afterburners aren't going to make you any faster with this skill. You just use less capacitor. Instead, you need things like acceleration control, which is a skill at efficiently using them to get the 5% speed bonus to afterburner and micro warp drive. Same with like evasive maneuvering, 5% impro improved ship agility. High speed maneuvering um, when you're using micro warp drives, a 5% reduction in the micro warp drive capacity usage per skill level, and stuff like this. So, you kind of need to keep your eyes open for all these as well. It's well worth actually just when you decide on a ship that you want to fly, have a look at it see what the basic skills are. So for example, if I'm flying interceptors, evasive maneuvering 5 is a required skill. I've got to have evasive maneuvering 5 in order to be able to actually learn the interceptor skill. There, if we tap into this and go into its eye, you see there, evasive maneuvering 5, navigation 2, and spaceship command 3 were required to fly that. So once we've got those basic skills, you can sit there and go, right, okay, so that was evasive maneuvering. What else is around that similar sort of stuff? And have a look at it. Like navigation, skill at regulating the power output of ship thrusters, 5% bonus to sub warp ship velocity um, per skill level. That's every ship in the game gets that bonus for having navigation trained. Warp drive operation, 10% reduction in capacity need of initiating warp per skill level for every ship in the game. So figure out what it is you need to actually train into to fly the ship and then look at stuff around it. You could spend hours. In fact, I have spent hours just going through this and looking right okay so I'm firing I'm using cannons so I need motion prediction I need rapid firing I probably want sharpshooter I've got some of the uh, the artillery and the auto cannon specializations there which I get by having small projectile turret trained up to five surgical strike to give additional damage to all weapon turrets trajectory analysis to add on additional accuracy fall off 
some of these are more useful than others. Like if you're using something like snub-nosed railguns, or blasters as they're called in EVE Online, trajectory analysis isn't so important because it's a 5% bonus to accuracy falloff. And accuracy falloff isn't huge on snubs. You want more of the optimal range and things like that. Um, on the other hand, if you're using things like auto cannons, which rely on that accuracy falloff, that becomes a really important skill to train, which is why I've got it all the way to level 4 already. If I'm using artillery, then yeah, obviously Surgical Strike is going to be a useful one as well, because it gives me bigger alpha, um, things like Sharpshooter as well for the additional optimal range um, on those. Controlled Bursts, though, the character came with Controlled Bursts level 1. You can see there, 5% reduction in capacity need of weapon turrets per skill level, not at all useful for projectile cannons, uh, for auto cannons and howitzers and artillery and, you know, projectile weapons, because they don't use capacitor. Um, if you're using lasers, though, that's a really useful skill to have, so take a look through these and have a good look at sort of what you see there. Now, the final thing, just to touch on very briefly, is the market itself. Now, if, for example, I wanted to buy myself a cheetah, I can just search for it here. And you'll see that this finds regional. This is always regional market, and this changes based on where you are. I'm in Heimatar at the moment, so it's only going to show me Heimatar. Notice, I don't get to see Jita. I would have to go and look specifically at Jita. But notice as well, this is not in price order here. This is very confusing. Basically, you can set it to be in price order, but then be aware of how many jumps away things are, uh, quantities and things like that. And even then, that's... There we are, that's the right way around. 34, uh, 34 million is what I'm going to need in order to buy a cheetah. In fact, let's just do that now, double click on it, and we're gonna buy one of those. It's gonna tell me that that is based here at rents, um, and if I want to, I can actually right click and set that as a destination so I can immediately go and pick it up. I'm going to hit yes on that because yes, I know it's going to be there, and it gives me an idea of where we're going. You see, it's all in yellow to say that that's where I'm flying to. I've got that set as my destination. So if I decided that actually I wanted a covert Ops, oh, I can't spell for the life of me here. There we are, Covert Ops Cloaking Device 2. I'm never going to be able to use that. Oh, but look, they are on sale at rent as well. You can see other stations that are on here, and some of those might be cheaper, so let's search by price. Nope, the cheapest ones are fortuitously going to be at rent as well. Um, obviously, Covert Ops Cloaking Device 2 is not particularly useful to me at this point in time, because, well, yeah, I don't have the skills required, you can see there. You do not possess all the required skills to use this item, and remember, I can click onto that, and it'll tell me what I need to train. Cloaking 4 is what I'm going to need to get that up high enough for me to be able to use the Covert Ops cloaking device. Anyway, folks, that really is everything for today. I hope that's given you an idea of how to get started in EVE Online on your first day. I know there's a lot of information going on there. Um, there's a lot of stuff I've covered all over the place. Hopefully, I can get some good timestamps in there. Let me know if there's anything you think I've missed. And if you have any questions at all, then, of course, either ask in the comment section down below here on YouTube or come and join us on Discord, linked in the description below as well. I will be opening up some public and Catskull Cartel um, EVE Online online channels as well for people to talk into. Remember, I'm not trying to pull people out of Echoes into EVE Online. I merely want to be able to showcase both games as I enjoy both of them. There's a lot of crossover and there's some interesting points where we can talk about one game using the using the other as an example. Things that work better in EVE Online than work in, uh, work in Echoes. Things that work better in Echoes than work in EVE Online. And that kind of thing. Anyway, let me know how you get on, folks. Happy sailing. See you in New Eden. I'm going to go out and finish doing this mining just as soon as I've changed my fitting across to put that poxy mining laser back on. <laughs>